Hi, Internet. So presumably I have things more pressing to do than this video. I have um, a bunch of Armagnac Teneraz videos to do. I have a whole bunch of rum reviews to do. I have some Palmas Brannies that are in the queue. But uh, I really want to do this video because something was bo th bothering me, which is I just did a review of this little sample from a door this is their vsop which i did not like at all i found it to be an overdosed mess just sugary to the point where i couldn't actually determine what the character of the distillate was um and that i feel i, I was worrying that like, that could give people the impression that i don't like cognac um which is not the case um I want to, the message I, I wanted to hammer um, back in my old intro to cognac video was, um, you know, that there are two cognacs and you should, and to the extent that you should drop the, you know, the big four and the people trying to chase after the big four, um, there are plenty of smaller independent craft style producers that you should absolutely be looking out for because they're doing quality stuff. The other side of that was, um, in that in those old um, intro cognac videos, I never really talked about the terroir, the, the sort of geography of the region very much. And in particular, I never tried um, just some of the regions that don't get as much attention. So that stays to try to fix that, that shortcoming. Um, on the one hand, I just reemphasize, there are small craft independent producers out there making really, really good cognac that you should be interested in. And on the other hand, to just talk about the uh, cognac terroir a little bit. Um, so I've got two uh, <clears throat> things from Cognac Park. Uh, these are Binnie's picks, actually. Um, and I got one from Gros Perrin, who uh, I just recently reviewed an Armagnac from them, and I was uh, quite impressed. So now we're going to be doing one of the cognacs. Um, so these are all, you know, uh, I believe these are all sort of what we would call uh, independent bottlers, what they would call negotiants. All right, uh, and and importantly, they are from the borderies, the the Finbois and the Bon Bonbois. Um, what the hell does that mean? Okay, cognac geography. Um, the two main region. If, if you look at a map of cognac. It's mostly a series of like concentric circles. In the center you have, uh, for the most part, you have the, 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 the Grand Cognac region. And then right outside that you have Petit Cognac. And those are the two sort of really big famous regions known for longevity and quality and they get all the, all the, all the press. Um, uh, brandies that use uh, only stuff in those regions get to be called fine cognac. So if you see them on the label, that's what that means. But you, uh, outside of those regions, you have others that are well worth your attention. So uh, first among them is the region, um, uh, the, the Grand Champ Champagne just starts just south of the city of Cognac itself. But you go north of the city and kind of even within the city itself a little bit, you have the uh, Bordery um, uh, region, which is known as a little bit of a geeky region. This is where the, uh, uh, some of the nerds hang out and enjoy their stuff. Um, but it's not really discussed that much in sort of the big houses. And then um, outside of those, those two main concentric circles, the, the, the uh, fine champagne regions, you have the, the so-called bois. Um, immediately outside, you have the fin bois. And then still further outside, you have the, uh, the bon bois, um, so the, the, the fine woods and the good woods. You also have um, kind of off in the, uh, the northwest, of the region, the uh, uh, the Bois Ordinaire, the you know ordinary uh, ordinary woods, which try as I might, I couldn't find a bottle from the from from that region, but it's there, and um, I'm sure they can produce good stuff. Why do you care? I mean, I mean, isn't it isn't it just the case that the the Grand Champagne and Petit Champagne are going to be making the best stuff, and you should just be trying stuff from them? Not necessarily, right? Because first of all, different producers, different presentations. Um, um, 
if someone in you know the the, the Bois Ordinaire is making craft styled cognac, they're really taking their time with their fermentation, with their aging, and they're bottling you know at higher strengths with no dosage, no coloring, no no fakey fakeness. Um, that is you know that can easily be better than a, than something that costs more money coming from the the sort of more central regions. The, but the other thing is the style of cognac is is changing and you should which means we may have to reevaluate our sort of norms for thinking about this stuff what i mean is like the 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 ascendancy of of the champagne regions is based upon a certain way we we, we view what cognac should taste like which is very sweet <coughs> sorry raisiny it's a digestif right um uh very, you know, kind of kind of woody um, and bottled at, you know, 40-ish percent. And tastes are changing. So maybe maybe some of these other regions, once you sort of eliminate those those norms, those those sort of barriers to um, and you, you you drop the sugar, you drop everything else, um, you drop the the added water, maybe some of those other regions start to sort of come up and compete with what were supposedly the big boys. So these are just some reasons why you should start considering, you know, stuff outside of the champagne, you know, large characters. And why I should have, why I should have originally talked about this stuff more um, in my original Intro to Cognac videos. Anyways, we're going to try these things. Um, uh, we, so I'm going to go just in order of increasing proof. So I have here uh, Cognac Park Single Barrel, cellar number eight. This is a Borderese pick. So remember, this is the region, little tiny region just north of the city of Bordeaux. Uh, this is aged by, uh, uh, I think it's Jean uh, Tessendier, who is, does all the Con Cognac Park stuff. Barrel number 9497, picked by Binnie's, aged 14 years old, 330 bottles. Um, this was bottled in March 2019. Uh, and it was bottled at 43% alcohol. Now that can seem, you know, a little meager by, you know, say Scotch malt standards, but uh, by Cognac standards, that's pretty good. I will take it. All right, uh, so what do we got here? On the nose of this uh, Cognac Park Borderies bottling from 04. Okay, the nose is extremely interesting, and this is, this is why I think people should be interested in Cognac. If you are getting a little bit tired of, I don't know, bourbon rye, um, malts, even rums, and you want something just even on Armagnacs for that matter, and you want something totally different, uh, cognac, good cognac can bring that. This is extremely floral and extremely exotic. Um, um, I'm getting like violets and a lot of Indian food, weirdly enough. Um, so here, the, the kind of spiced f floral um, uh, rice pudding, that's in here. There's some curries, some like green curries going on. <coughs> some like uh, a little bit of an aromatic pear note, something that's reminding me of, um, if you if you go to Argentina, Argentinian wine, you will find a, a, a grape called Tarantas, which has, you know, the, the Tarantas aromatics kind of remind me of what's going on here. There's even just like some sliced white grapes uh, going on, just. Yeah, straight, straight aromatic white grapes. A little white pepper. It's very refined, this nose. This is a nerdy nose. This is not, you know, um, big, you know, halfback football player kind of nose. This is much more sort of delicate and precise and a little bit potpourri-like. It's a little, the, the floral element is very special. I don't think I've, you know, you give me this in a blind, assuming I know this style, like I'm not calling anything else. This smells like a cognac. On the palate. On the palate, also quite good. Um, very floral, very floral. It, it closes really on a, the potpourri note, note kind of, it's almost too much on the finish. It doesn't cross that line, but it's there's a lot of like a floral thing going on. Um, the cure thing again, violets, plum, 
Um, really more like plum eau de vie than actual plum, actually. I have some plum eau de vies in the back. I should be I should be uh, doing a video on those. Um, Darjeeling tea. Some kind of like exotic woods, like um, you know Brazilian woods, balsa wood. Um, that Toronto's note is coming back. Uh, there's a little hint of, a, of like a dried grass character here. Some, but then there's this confectionery load, like a, like um, pastries, maybe like apricot croissants, something like that. Kind of funky floral, a little actually floral bitter on the finish. Not a huge problem, but it's there. Take note of it. Um, I like this. And again, if, if, if your pal is a little bit tired from other stuff, like this is a great thing to pick up and, and, and try out. Um, so I'm going to give this a squirt of water. We'll come back to it. Let, uh, moving on to our next park. This is the Cognac Park Single Barrel Cellar number 8, uh, uh, Femme Bois. Uh, also a Vinny's pick. Barrel number 9577 uh, from 2008, bottled but at the same date, uh, March 2019. 360 bottles, 10 years old, um, same blender, bottled at 45% alcohol this time, so a little bit stronger. All right, so this is supposedly, we're, we're getting into the, the less prestigious regions here. Um, let's see if it's, there's a fall off in quality. Um, initially, it's actually a little bit closed on the nose. I'm getting like uh, some orange peel, a little bit of like a dusty attic thing. It's like like wood and dust and a little little hint of mustiness, but not bad. Um, pear. Apricot again. Dried flowers, much, much less floral than the uh, the borderies. But you are getting, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if the um, the cast is more active on this. I don't, I can't tell. The, the color looks pretty close. But I am getting more dried fruit on this. Um, some prunes, uh, golden raisins. Maybe like a fig or two. Like like three figs, um, some old tea bags, <coughs> slight, very modest. What is that? Um, almost a floral honeyed. No, what this really smells like is, is like a young dessert Bordeaux, but not from Sauterne or Barsac. This smells like a. Um, one of the smaller regions, like a, um, uh, like a Cadillac or something. One of those little, little tiny, uh, early drinking, uh, dessert Bordeaux. But young. It doesn't have time to develop yet. It's still very primary. Um, still, you know, not as aromatically exciting as, as the, as the first one, but, um, it smells very fun on the palate. Hmm. Oh, that's nice. So, um, the finish is a little bit shorter on this, but it's um, and it stays most more much more towards the front of my mouth. So it feels woodier. It feels kind of busier. Um, more immediate, much more immediate, but it's a little bit shorter. And it's not sort of going back past my 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 molars. Um, this feels oh, it feels woody but young. Put it that way. But God, it's nice. Um, dried fruit again. Prunes, uh, sultanas, um, figs. But then that orangey thing. It's almost like a like a Grand Marnier note, dessert Bordeaux, like 
heavy on the on Sauvignon uh, dessert Bordeaux. Pear like a pear compote note with uh, with the scent with like tons of cinnamon on there. Uh, white pepper. And some nice floral notes, especially on the finish. Nowhere near as floral as the first one, but they're there kind of adding a little bit of lit to, to all this. Yeah, this is real nice. Um, again, this is this just does not come across like any other spirit in the world that I can think of. Um, Pisco, uh, both, both Peruvian and, and Chilean, might be, you know, hinting at this territory, but, but cognac is the one that does it. If you can get a good one, and that's really the question. Don't don't run out and grab yourself like a Martell or something. You have to like hunt and pick for things like this. Um, but it's worth it. All right, let's see, give this some water too. A little more. Good enough. All right, moving on to my uh, the most serious thing here, which is from the worst region. You know. So, uh, so, so called worst region. This is the Gros Perrin uh, Cognac Bonbois from 1992. So uh, it doesn't say when this was bottled, but you know, presume this is, you know, at least 25 years old, probably closer to maybe, maybe like 27 ish. Uh, let's see, not a whole lot of information on this. They're, they're saying, um, uh, so lot number 679, limited to uh, 42 liters, which makes me, did they just lose the rest in evaporation? There's a story behind that, but in any case, limited uh, 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 to 42 liters um, and uh, bottled a strength of 51.5% ABV. So a um, little bit of a bruiser, this one. All right, here we go. Gross Perrin, um, 1992. Bon bon. <laughs> All right, I need to contextualize this. Um, you know, sometimes in like in, in music, uh, someone will take something that you really hate and then play with it, remix it, you know, rework it so that it, it becomes something actually pretty interesting and, and enjoyable. Like for instance, I've always hated um, Elgar, the composer. Um, um, I hate his cello concerto. It's schmaltzy and like romantic, and I, 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 it's not my thing. But you know, Aaron Funk, Venetian snares can take it and you know chop the hell out of it, put it in seven eight time, uh, and you know uh, smear some skittering breakbeats all over it, and suddenly you know I'm I'm totally into that. Um, that's kind of what's going on here. I haven't, I haven't ha made formal notes on Hennessy VS ever, so far as I know. I've, I've had it a few times. The last time was in a store tasting, and my, my, my notes were something like, you know, raisins in caramel plus like the steel mesh that you use to clean sinks. Like that, that's kind of my Hennessy VS notes. I do not like it. And yet here, like smelling this. I'm detecting some of those like same characteristics, but they've changed in such a way that I kind of like what's going on. I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the neighbors of of um, wherever uh, Jean Grosperin were, was getting the stuff from was supplying, you know, <laughs> Hennessy. It has that. There's a there's a continuity of character there, but God, this has so much more going on. I mean, it's it's you know. The, the woody the woodiness is is there it's very and the the dried fruit is there it's very earthy and serious though prunes sultanas um cinnamon black pepper like fruit preserves um apricot preserves but you like you like mix your apricot preserves with like a ton of topsoil but but you're kind of into it yeah, topsoil, but old dirt too, along with that. A couple of flowers, like really dirty flowers. Um, like old coffee grinds, some, some, um, <coughs> a 
maybe some like um you know stale cigars um toffee candies that have gotten maybe a little bit a little bit old a little dusty but you kind of you're kind of enjoying them anyways and just a hint of like artisanal soap like you know made by the hippies like just down the road from you who are selling it for entirely too much money that you know their soap and just a couple sprigs of fresh mint in this this is a great little nose um yeah it's it's you can you can see the connection to the the mainstream of cognac if i can put it that way but there's so much going on here so much more going on on the palate again 51.5 percent on abv so watch my face long finish dry finish serious big but kind of balanced it's, it's kind of keeping itself in balance despite the hugeness of what's happening um i feel like i'm i'm just chewing on cuban cigars right now like i you know i got some some um you know real cuban cohibas and i was just like you know took a bunch of them and just took a big bite out and I'm enjoying it. I'm going to get a t tummy ache labor later from the tobacco, but I'm enjoying it. Um, cigars, cinnamon, cardamom, a little bit of tea, awesome tea, really malty tea, um, prunes, figs, black pepper, dried cherries, not just dried cherry. There's just also some like cherry preserves in there, but you're gonna mix again. You're gonna mix your cherry preserves with some with some topsoil. Um, what is that? Lots of lots of dirtiness, lots of woodiness, like but like all old and a little funky. Long, long, long finish. There's kind of a forest honey thing going on, um, like German forest honey. A little bit of um, Mr. Pibb, you know, like off-brand Dr. Pepper. It's a little bit different than Dr. Pepper. Don't confuse them. Um, it's kind of brutal, but I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's a brute that keeps itself in check, right? You know, it's not it's not going out out of control. This is very you know pinpoint precise brutality. Quite good. Um, well, here's proof. I mean, right away that the the Bon Bois can make terrific cognac. Um, this is really good, and I'm gonna add a couple squirts of water to it, and we'll come back in a minute. All right, so we're gonna start over, um, see how these things reacted to uh, to a squirt of water. Back to the uh, the, the cognac park, uh, the bordery. Gets a little bit more floral with the addition of water, a little bit sweeter too. The um, the the kind of wood sugars um, come out more and start to take over the uh, uh, those sort of grapey Toronto's floral notes a little bit, but but it's still. But the flowers kind of keep keep pace with it. Um, lightly, lightly soapy, lightly potpourri, but nice. Um, a little orange zest, little um, bergamot, um, some some honey, maybe some like uh, clover honey. You know, very very floral, uh, uh, top heavy kind of honey. It's a it's a complex nose. It is not the easiest nose in the world because it, you just have to be be willing to kind of accept the floral nature of this. But again, if if you've been stuck on malts and stuff like that, like this is going to be a different thing for you, right? It's, which is one reason to try something out, try out something like this. On the palate, so. The, hmm. 
Oh, hey, look at that. So that's that floral bitterness, which is bothering me about the uh, the park borderies before, has basically totally lifted. Um, yeah, it, it's become a little bit more sweet, hair a bit more woody. Um, there's a little more um, uh, sort of stewed tea note in this. A little more exotic wood. But I, I like what this is doing with water. This, this, sh and this is why occasionally you add a squirt of water or something to see, you know, does it get better? Does it fall apart in you? This has gotten better with the addition of water. Um, I like this a lot. I would give this an 84 plus. Um, nicely done. I'd love to try something like this at, at cast strength, but you know, I'm not complaining. This is, uh, this is very good. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna keep these in a row. Um, yeah, 84 plus for the uh, Cognac Park uh, Borderies for Binnies. All right, moving on to the Fambois. Again, this is younger, but bottled at a little bit, a little bit higher strength. With water. So with water, it's still a little bit closed on the nose, which is interesting. It gets kind of malty, actually. There's a little bit of like a malted milk ball note that comes out, along with that, you know, intense orange peel, uh, Grand Marnier sort of note. A little bit of like a, yeah, pastries, but like different, like fruit pastries, different kinds, maybe like an apple croissant plus a pear croissant plus like an apricot croissant. Um, and just kind of very dusty, very old attic like. <clears throat> Again, hand this to me blind in a lineup. Um, I'm gonna know this is cognac. I kind of know it. There's nothing else that smells, and, and I will know that it's, it's like craft cognac because nothing else in the world really smells like this. Don't think that you're getting the full range of French grape based brandy just by having Armagnac all the time, y'all. Go, go try some good, good cognac sometime on the palate. Mm -hmm. Again, kind of sweetens up. Um, gets a little more floral, but not out of control. Um, caramelly, raisiny cognac. Um, with with some, some earth in there, Little little little, uh, little dirt, um, some black pepper. I mean, this is this is. Hold on, let me try this one more time before I braid it. Yeah, this is good. I don't remember what this was going for price wise. I think it was seventy or eighty originally. I did not pay, pay that much. This was from the closeout shelf. But man. Um, Considering, like, I think the cheapest XO cognacs out there um, from the big four, I think the cheapest is Cavossier. It's, it's like 160, 170, somewhere in there. This is absolutely going to rip that apart. Um, higher strength, you know, same minimum age, 10 years. Um, but I think people who, you know, are attracted to standard mainstream cognac could get into this. It's doing a lot of those same things. It's just kind of dialing down the sugar and bringing up the other elements a lot. Yeah, it's not rocking my world. This is an 84 point cognac. So just, but I mean, it's pretty close, still pretty close to the borderies. I like this. Um, I think this is pretty, accessible too. If any of this is still around, um, go grab it and go throw some at your friends who, you know, are drinking, you know, I don't know, Gervosier or Remy or whatever, and spending too much money on it. Go try to introduce them to this. They may not be into it, but try to get them into this game. Um, and if they're not into it, then you can finish it off yourself.
Yeah, I like this. Um, 84 out of 100 for the uh, fun bois. All right, and we're, we're moving on to the big girl's parent. Okay, the, the gross perron with a little bit of water becomes really more exotic. Um, the topsoil is still there, but it becomes a little bit more floral. <coughs> Lavender, which I'm enjoying. There's more um, kind of funky woods, balsa wood, some pine in there. Um... The steel mesh thing is still there, but I'm, I'm into it for whatever reason. And that, that Cuban cigar note is starting to show up more on the nose. Yeah, very, again, still, still very much a brute, but I'm enjoying it. Oh, that's interesting. Woody and takes an interesting, like, kind of bitter herbal uh, twist at the end while still being, like, really um, having an appealing sweetness that is kind of weaving the, the, the event together. I feel like I'm both, like, I picked up, like, a cedar chest and I'm, like, eating it and I'm, I'm like, double fisting an Amaro at the same time. And it's kind of working for me. Um, so Woody earthy, um, kind of herbal bitter, but still nice. Um, I don't, I don't know how to break that down any further. Yeah. Again, and this is why you add water to see what happens. This likes water. Spicier, woodier. Um, more, still more earthy than it was before, but also a little bit sweeter. This is very good spirit. Um, whoever made this has done a dang good job, and they deserve uh, 87 points out of 100. These are all good. These are all quite good. And more importantly, they're very different from anything else out there which I think should be the main point of appeal, honestly. Um, if, you are, if you are kind of stuck in a rut a little bit, and things like Mar and Baijo and, I don't know, Agricol Rum are a little bit scary, um, hop into these guys. Uh, craft uh, Cognac, especially from these outer regions, is feels like it's going to be much more of a thing in the future as this catches on. Um, and I really hope to see more of it. And I really hope to see more people drinking it. Um, so we, what do we got? Uh, 84 plus uh, for the Borderies, 84 for the Fambois. And uh, the Bombois gets an 87. I'm generally pleased with this. And uh, so go buy these. Uh, and unfortunately, do not buy the uh, AA door of VSOP because um, these are better. Um, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I hope this was educational. And uh, cheers.